Joey Jones, retired Marine bomb technician and Afghanistan veteran, also a Fox News contributor, Fox Nation host, and a friend of the Faulkner Focus. Good to see you today. First of all, you know, you're hearing from two different dads, as I understand it, two different locations, um, about something that they had in common, a reaction to the watch check. Yeah, you know, we always say there's a difference between perception and reality. Um, but when you say that, what, what matters is perception, not reality. So it's our, it's our responsibility to not present a message even if it's not what we intend. I can't tell you if he was checking his watch. I don't know if he can see well enough to read the, the hands on his watch. I, I don't know. I, I just don't know what Joe Biden does with his watch. But he obviously was doing the motion of checking his watch. I saw it, and, and as soon as I saw it, I paused the TV and I thought, is that what I thought I just saw? Maybe I'm just being overly critical because I'm, I'm pretty upset with him anyway. And I kind of let it go. And then I pick up Twitter, and it's all over Twitter. Millions of other people saw it. And, and you know, I'd love to say I'm surprised, but I'm not. I am disgusted, and I just don't understand you know, and then he goes and he starts talking about the, the loss of his own son, and, and I, I hate that. You know, I, my heart broke for him when it happened, but it's almost like he wants to equate that to, you know, the sons and daughters lost on the battlefield. It's just a strange way of presenting yourself as the commander-in-chief, the person who ordered those men and women onto the battlefield who ultimately died and sacrificed. It's just a very strange way to present yourself to the, to the people that you should be on your knees and kissing their hands. And instead, you're checking your watch and talking about your own sacrifice. And I think it's just uh, it just shows how disconnected, either through old age or or maybe he's just always been that way. I'm only 35 years old. He was a politician for more than a decade before I was born. I don't know what Joe Biden was like back then, but he, he sure as hell isn't that uh, that great at connecting with folks today. I can tell you that. Wow. You know, as you were talking and and kind of giving some plausible other things that could have happened, I was thinking. If there is even the possibility that it's just a, you know, a, a nervous tick, whatever it is, isn't anybody around this man to say, don't worry, you watch the ceremony because you know how you like to. I mean, that's what we do for each other. And I know that my military yeah, dependent exactly background right. comes from a dad who would do that for his soldiers and they would do that for him. And that's what I hear kind of from you. Exactly. Well, look, I, I exactly. want to and... go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> it's just distasteful. It's, it's just. You got to be better. You're the leader. You've got a team of people who are around just to make sure you don't have lint on your jacket and they can't help you not check your watch while dead bodies are rolling off an airplane. It's just, I don't understand it. And I don't want to exacerbate the pain and rage felt by Gold Star families. I think they should be they should be given a lot of grace right now and we shouldn't take their words and use those to attack politicians. That's why mm. I'm trying to not tiptoe, but be respectful right now. But just as someone who's had to had to go to a lot of funerals at Arlington. Uh, someone that was that was texting with a Gold Star daughter five minutes before this hit. I've got my own rage at this. I, I am upset, and uh, and I think he should he should be better than that in a lot better than that in a lot of ways. All right, we're going to put up at my request, team, the hotline number for military veterans. Military leaders in Ohio have sent a message to veterans, Joey, and it's something that you and I talk about on the program even previous to to the loss that we suffered with those 13 in Afghanistan and all that's played out there. Um, but veterans who are feeling frustrated and challenged by this time, uh, here's that from a major general. Even the toughest warriors sometimes need to take a knee and get a drink of water. And that applies mentally too. Sometimes the emotional, the mental burden becomes too heavy and we have to take a knee and ask for help. And there is no shame in that particularly in light of the uh, current events that we see unfolding. Joey. Yeah, you know, I appreciate his words. Um, the veterans I know aren't inspired by, by generals that they see walk across the parade deck every now and then. We're inspired by the, the small unit leaders that we fought alongside that truly understand our, our own experience and actually shed blood on, on, on these battlefields. And I'm not diminishing the general, that's not what I mean. I mean, those are the people that I hope speak up are those staff NCOs that led troops out on the battlefield, those junior officers that were platoon commanders. I hope they check in with their troops. They let them know they're thinking about them. But the American people need to understand something. I lost my brothers and legs in 2010, and we understood by 2012 why we were there, and it wasn't to win that war. Our work was undermined by 2014. 
And this is a fight internally that we've had for a long time. Most of us understood that we had lost this war 10 years ago because the political will in this country was not to keep a pressure there and win the war in the sense of what we were told we were trying to do, which was to destroy the Taliban. So the politics have been the tail wagging the dog on the battlefield. Mm. And I hope the American people take that lesson to heart when we're electing leaders and listening to the narrative. Um, it was pretty hurtful to see Mike Pompeo stand next to a Taliban leader. It was pretty hopeful, hurtful to have President Obama send 40,000 of us to Afghanistan just to pull us back in time to lose that fight so we could get an election and, and claim victory. This is not new. It's happened with every administration. President Biden just took it to the next level and, and some of us got killed on the way out. And that was just unnecessary. Joy Jones, thank you very much. We'll keep that crisis line up as we go out uh, into this next topic. Appreciate you. God bless you. Thank you.